This may not have aged perfectly, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't check it out. Okay, everybody, today we're going all the way back to 1975 to take a little look at a television motion picture of all things. We are talking about Trilogy of Terror. But before we go any further, before we dig into this gem anymore, once and again, and as always, to the trip, well, it's more of a TV spot. Eh, whatever. This was directed by Dan Curtis. He did a lot of TV directing. We're talking about he did things like Dark Shadows, The Winds of War, The Night Strangler, Warm Remembrance, The Intruders, and Super Train, and Last Ride of the Dalton Gang. And he did some movies, you know, House of Dark Shadows, Night of Dark Shadows, and, and he directed the immortally awesome Burnt Offerings. Oh, yeah. Okay, playing Julie, and Millicent, and Therese, and Amelia, and everybody else, the one and only Karen Black, who I talked about when we reviewed her Dolphins, but let's do it again. We're talking about she was in The House of a Thousand Corpses. She was in Nashville, and Day of the Locust, and the Airport 1975, The Great Gatsby, and Five Easy Pieces, and Easy Rider, uh, uh, Invaders from Mars, uh, a Firecracker, Dogtown, It's Alive 3, Capricorn 1, and I can't tell you enough how many times you have to go back and check out Burnt Offerings. So, good career, long career, very talented, but we're going to get to that part. Let's keep moving. Playing Chad, Robert Burton. Meh, yeah, let's go. We're talking about he did some TV work. He was on stuff like One Life to Live and Texas and Vegas and The Doctors, As the World Turns, and, you know, Cannon, Lassie, Marcus Welby, and he was in one kind of real flick. Linda Lovelace for president. I shit you not. Go look it up. Playing Chester Ramsey, George Gaines. Come on. All those Police Academy flicks that he was in, are you shitting me? Plus he was in Tootsie and Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid and Altered States and Nickelodeon, The Way We Were, The Boy Who Cried Wolf, and on TV, General Hospital, Quincy, Matlock, and most of all, you probably remember him from Punky Brewster. So, hey man, you know the face, he was around, that's just the way it goes. Now even throw in one more person, because the cast in this is small, playing Anne Catherine Reynolds, another TV personality. She popped up in stuff like Benson, and Too Close for Comfort, and Moonlight, uh, Give Me a Break, and Soap, and Trap with John, and the Amazing Spider-Man, and Carter Country, I wish you guys would remember that, and Cannon, and the Partridge Family. So, whatever, you know, she was in this a little bit, and she was around. This motion picture is really about just a few people, although you do see Gregory Harrison pop up for like a second. Remember he was a TV star back in the day for like three minutes? Is what it was. Let's keep going. Okay, everybody, here's the story. I'm going to try to do this in 90 seconds or less, and actually this one I could probably actually pull off in 90 seconds or less just because... It's so small and so sparse. I'm going to keep it fast, keep it moving, keep it entertaining, keep it going so we can get to where we would much rather be. The summation. This is a truly an anthology series. It's three little stories, therefore a trilogy of terror. The first story is one called Julie. It's about a school teacher. Well, a college professor, actually. And she has this student. And this student becomes obsessed with her. And he's 
kind of talks her into going out on a date. But when he's there, he drugs her. It's kind of really dark and creepy Bill Cosby shit, actually. He drugs her, and he gets her in the room, and he takes pictures of her, and then blackmails her into half to have sex with him, all this other kind of crazy shit. But is she as innocent as she seems? Might she have a dark side? Might he have been lured in with her powers? Who knows? I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to watch that one. Then comes Millicent and Therese, a story of two sisters. One, so god-awful pure that she just is like weird and bizarre with big, thick glasses and is warning everybody and anybody about her evil sister. Her sister, who is so dark and so twisted and perverted and uses up men and chews them up and spits them out, that she feels the need to go out and warn everybody. And the sister has to have a doctor, you know, the police academy guy. And he gets involved in it. But really, what's the story with these two sisters? You never really see them together in the same place. At the set. Well, maybe that's given too much. It is what it is. You'll get there. And then finally, there's the story, Amelia, about a woman who's supposed to have dinner one night with her mom. But mom is really upset and guilt tripping her because she's going to cancel dinner and go out with her boyfriend, a boyfriend that she bought this little voodoo doll for. Eh, is what it goes. But she feels so bad, she decides to stay in. She's going to go hang out with her mom. Before you know, a little voodoo man comes to life, chases her around with a knife, starts yelling, yeah, all kinds of crazy shit. And that's, well, basically what it is. A doll comes to life, chases one around apartment. There you go. Now, everybody, that's basically the three stories in a nutshell. They're very short. They're very concise. They are what they are. It is what it is. Let's get going to the summation, because we'll try to have our most fun there. Woohoo! Okay, everybody, does Trilogy of Terror work? Yeah, for a little TV anthology series, Trilogy of Terror works. Has it aged perfectly? Probably not, but there are still great things, like I said in the beginning, to see in this motion picture, and we're going to cover them all. Now, let's get the big three out of the way. The directing, this is obviously a TV movie. It's shot like a TV movie. It feels like a TV movie. The soundtrack just emotes TV movie. The fonts on the screen look TV movie. This reeks TV movie, and you're never going to forget it the whole time you're watching it. So if you think you're going to find something with a lot of boobs and a lot of swearing and a lot of gore, this is not the motion picture for you. They do not exist here. The writing? Eh, it's all right. It's not bad. Not great. It just is what it is. TV movie quality. You know what I'm talking about? Not really great TV movie quality, like Salem's Lot, but okay TV movie quality. There you go. And finally, the acting. Now, this is where this motion picture shall shine, and does shine. Let's get down to brass taxes. One of the reasons for watching this motion picture is literally watching a tour de force by Karen Black. She plays so many different characters, and then characters within characters that she is all over the place. You're watching her basically play five different characters in this motion picture. Well, four, but five. And she really nails all of them. She plays the innocent, uptight school teacher perfectly. She plays the evil, well, I'm not going to give that one away. And then she plays the sister who's repressed and all that perfectly. And then she plays the sister who's out of control and psychotically perfectly. And she plays this daughter who has a kind of overbearing mom and just wants to escape from a little ee doll perfectly. So really, this is just almost like watching somebody go on a tear and put in a masterful performance all by themselves. Really, everybody else in the cast pff, doesn't even really have to be there. I mean, and really they're not. You know what I'm talking about? Robert Burton is there, yes. And by the way, he was her husband in real life. They got divorced like the same year that they made this or right after that. I mean, she went through husbands like, you know, Carter went through liver pills. It doesn't make a difference. But he was her husband at the time. He was in this with her. And that's kind of cool. And of course, it was always cool to see George Gaines pop up and do what he was going to do. But really, really, this is almost a one-woman show. This is a one-actor dominating performance, and everybody just kind of jumps in and fills in little teeny gaps. And that's what you're presented with, and she does an incredible job. Now, a lot of you, probably like me, predominantly remember the third story, because that was the really good one. The first one, okay. The second one, all right. Even though, and even both in those, they are touching on some subject matter. Like, geez, I can't believe they put this on television in 1975. You know what I mean? Who would think that they would put something on TV about date rape, and the second one is like all kinds of creepy shit going on in it. So you're like, wow, that was, that was pretty extreme. But the one that everybody remembers, the part of this thing that everybody has stuck into their psyche, is 
the third chapter. One, because it is so incredibly over-the-top, ridiculous, and fun. Two, because it is so goddamn silly. I'm telling you, right up there, right up there with Campbell in Evil Dead 2 is Black in Trilogy of Terror. You know how when you're watching him and he's in the cab and he's going crazy and he's just making you laugh and the shit is over the top and he's fighting with his own hand and all that kind of shit? This doesn't match that. But damn, it's goddamn close. Karen Black is hysterical in that scene. She's playing it terrified, yet she's playing it funny. She's got it all wrapped up into one, and it just delivers. The fights with the little doll are going to leave you on the floor laughing. I mean, it is literally going to have you split in the side. And the way she delivers it is the perfect amount of serious reality and over-the-top camp. Perfect perfect, perfect, perfect performance. It's hilarious. It's what makes this movie memorable. It's what's going to make you talk about it later. It is that third chapter. Now, like I said, is there parts of this that didn't age well? Yeah, but some of that is because of the times. Let's be honest. We've all seen things that happen in the first two chapters happen in other movies a million times over by now. We've seen the split personality thing. We've seen the woman that looks like the victim and she's really the predator. We've seen all that kind of stuff. Shit, if fucking anybody in your house watches a lifetime, you've seen it 450 times. So it's kind of just retreading it. And if you've never seen this thing before, you're going to figure it out and guess what's going on about eight minutes into those two chapters. So that's why it hasn't aged well. But for its time, 1975, on television. Those things made this little movie pretty memorable, and those things made this movie stand out. So get out there. Watch Trilogy of Terror. If just for the fact that Karen Black delivers in such a huge way, if just for the fact that the third chapter delivers in such a huge way, and if just for the fact of going back and seeing what the world was like 47 years ago, or whatever the hell it was, is that right? I think it is. Anyway, and checking out what TV delivered and how they presented it to you. It's fun. It's nostalgic. It's a good remembrance. It's a good ride. And it's really short. It's like barely over an hour change long. So it's not that much to invest in if you don't like it. Check it out. All right, everybody. Be good. Take care. Stay out of trouble. Be kind to a friend. Be polite to a stranger. But most of all, never, and I mean ever, take any bullshit from anybody. See you soon.